Hello and welcome to Making Games in C. I'm Ollie and I'm going to be showing you how we make our first program in C today. So let's create a folder called Making Games in C and I'm just going to create a new file there. Well, I have created a new file called main.c. I just did this using the touch main.c like that. And I can list what's in this directory and you can see that we've got the main.c there. So I'm just going to open this up in our text editor. I'm just using Sublime Text. And all C programs start off with this entry point where it kind of says this is where we're starting our program. And this is even for really big programs like 3D games and everything. Go through this main entry point. And it takes two arguments. It takes the int, so a number of arguments count. And we don't have to understand what these actually are at the moment. And we've taken an array of char strings, uh, char pointers, so array of strings. And we're just going to return zero. That's just a standard way to say hey, we've, nothing special is happening when we finish because we want to int and it's going to leave like that. And so the rest of our program is going to be in this section. And save that. And then as we learned in the last episode, we can actually compile our program now. So running the GCC command, we can type in main.c. And it's compiling. And then we can look what's in our directory now. So we list the directory and we've got our executable a.out. So we can actually run that now. So if we go slash a.out, it ran it. It doesn't do anything, but we didn't get any errors or anything, so that's good. Um, and so the next thing we're going to do, and this is just the default um, name of the our executable that we get output. So we can actually have a look at what that looks like. So so it looks like that, and we can rename it by passing a compiler um, setting when we actually compile it. So when we do our gcc main.c, we can pass dash o, which means hey, this is something after this is a special um, thing, and it's the output name of the executable. And we'll say um, game. This we can call it anything. We don't put any dot out or anything. We just leave it. With no extension, so we'll do that. Go back over to our folder, and we've got our executable here. It looks the same, but when we actually double click on it, it will try, it can run it like that. But if we actually double click on this one, say I don't know what this is, this is a kind of a legacy format with a dot out, and so we're not going to be using this, so we'll just get rid of the a dot out. We can still run it from the command line, but we're just going to stay with the no extension one. So we pass this dash o gain to our compiler. So that's pretty good. We've got our first program, we can run it, and we've got where we're going to be coding stuff. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to, when we actually run our program, we can't see anything that's happening. We can't kind of interact with it or know where it's up to or anything. So we're going to introduce um, printf, which is a function from the C standard library. Right, if we just write include, um, we're, or we won't, we'll do this first and then we'll, if we go like this, so we're including a .h file, and this is the kind of other side of the coin of a .c file, it kind of has um, information about what functions it should be called and um, data structures and stuff. We'll talk more about this and you'll see more how these are used and stuff, but kind of we can do this to call in extra functions from um, other code. So, but we won't do that first. We'll comment it out with two slashes, and then we're going to type printf, and we're going to say hello, and hello world. And finish it off with a semicolon, say hey, we've finished that, we'll save it, we'll actually try to compile it now. So we'll go back over to our GCC compiler. And so we've got this error, and it says, Implicit function declaration wants us to include st std.io and io's input output, standard input output. So if we actually uncomment this one, we'll, we'll say, hey, I can find that now. I know what that is. So it works. And if we now run our program, so we'll just run it from the command line. So we can say in this folder, run game. And we got hello world. And it didn't leave a new line because we've actually got to pass our new line char um, character. So we escape key and so this is to say hey there's a special kind of letter coming after this. This is reserved for 
um, things when you want to do special kind of operate um, things, kind of like the new line character has it um, when we want to escape. Um, pot, um, kind of quotations, we can do that as well. So it knows, hey, this isn't actually the end of the string. We actually want to print this out. So we can actually do that. We'll put it after, like that. And we'll save it. We'll run it. Oh, we didn't compile it. So I'm just using the up key to um, retrieve a lot recently called functions, um, things running through the terminal. And so we got hello world, we got our new line, and we got our um, quotation mark. So that's good. So we'll get rid of that. So this is one way we can start actually seeing what's happening in our program. And we can also see what these um, int args and char star args actually do. So if we print, we're going to use some other things what printf has. We can say this percent sign is also meaning, hey, we're going to, this is a formatted string. We're actually going to pass more information to it. So this is percent %d means as an integer we're going to pass to it, and we want to print this out. So we do this by doing comma, and we pass another argument. And we can pass as many arguments as we like to this, kind of if these are all different variables. And it would be fine as long as we have a place for them in the string. So we'd have to go like that too. So there has to be the same amount of these special um, characters to how many arguments, or it won't like that. So if I actually char compile that, it says e more percentage conversions than data arguments. So we'll just delete that and we'll see what comes out now. So we'll compile. And we'll run game, and it says one. You might be asking what when we actually know what these are, we don't actually know what this one is representing. But this means there's one argument pass coming in, and this is at the actual information. So, what are these arguments? It's when we actually run our game, we can pass stuff to it. So, if I go like that and say run our game, but we're passing this information, and it can be anything because it just comes as a string. And if I press enter, we actually got two. So it's got two arguments passing to it. But we've only passed one, so what is this other one? So if we actually print it out what the first one is in this array, we can go args zero. And since this is a string, we just say char pointer, a pointer to a list of char characters. So if I go percent s, save that. And I'll run the compiler again and run the program. Don't pass anything and passes what the executable is called. So it passes the name of the executable. And that's always in every um, every program we write, we can pass the name of, we can get what the name is no matter if we don't pass it. So that's pretty good. So in our first program, um, we're going to make a prime sieve. So this is just an easy program and we're going to just jump straight into projects. And it basically you just gives you a list of prime numbers. So it's an algorithm, but I don't think it's a very hard algorithm. And so, so it goes through and has a special way of looking for prime numbers. So here's an example. So there's a list of numbers, so we say, hey, we want to pass, generate all the prime numbers up to 30. So we start off with a list of all the numbers from not including 1, because uh, we're looking for prime numbers and 1's always a prime number, or I don't think it counts as a prime number. So we go through and this is what our kind of algorithm does, it kind of, it says, generates a list first, First number in the list is two. Cross out every second number after the list in the list after two by counting in two increments. So we go start with two. Every second number we invalidate. Go through that. Then the next number in the list after two is three. Cross out every third number in the list after three by counting in three increments. So one, two, three. Cross out the six. One, two, three. Cross out the nine. So there. So eight and ten were already crossed out. So then we cross out the 9, 1, 2, 3, 12 is already crossed out, 
one, two, three, fifteen. We cross out the fifteen. So then the next number not yet crossed out in the list after three is five. Cross out every fifth number. So we kind of repeat that step. And then it says next is seven. The next step would be to cross out every seventh number in the list after. But they are already all crossed out at this point, or as these numbers 14 are also multiples of smaller primes. So the numbers not crossed out at this point in the list, so that kind of leaves us with the actual prime numbers. So so when we do this um, increment by seven. All these numbers, 14, 21, 28, also multiples of smaller primes. So, so when we went from 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 14 was already crossed out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 21 was already crossed out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28 was already crossed out. So I guess that's when you've crossed out all of them, that's when the algorithm ends. So we've got our pseudo code there, and we're just going to try to do it ourselves without actually following anything. So I think we've got kind of got an idea. So we'll just kind of follow what this these steps are. So first of all, we're going to take in what um, the user. We're just going to start with our first. Um, finally, what in the end we want to kind of the user can pass in any number, but we're just going to start off with we'll start with the thirty example. So we're going to say um, our number. So this is we've just this is a variable of int type. So a whole number. So it can be negative, but not like doesn't have any fraction part of it. So our number. So I've just called that. That can be anything. And we're starting with thirty. So and this is different to the maths operator where it says one side is equal to another. It's kind of like that, but it's more of a assignment operator saying we're assigning. 30 to our number, going starting from right, going to the left. And so we'll keep print f, but we won't use that at the moment. So we're going to go, we're going to use a for loop. So we'll talk about what a for loop is. So a for loop is kind of you can go over data in a loop. So if I say int equals zero, i less than We'll just put our number and plus plus i. So basically, it's going to go through this loop starting at zero. Or i. So we set up a variable starting at zero. It's going to keep going. This is our terminator part. So it's in the middle. So these semicolons denote what each one. There's three different sections. So set up our variable where it starts. This is our ending thing, so when it gets to this, um, it keeps going while this is true. So as soon as that becomes false, so as soon as it becomes equal to our number, it finishes. And it's going to go up by one each time. And plus plus is just, it's the same as one, or it's also the same as i. So it's it actually modifies the this value by one. So, and on this, these sides do matter, but not in this case. It's only when it's a more kind of. If it was like I. If it was like that, if we go plus plus, it will do it before it. If we do it, I think it will still do that. But this normally means it goes after we've actually computed the other things. But when we actually come to that, we'll explore it more. So we're going to go through this many times. So starting at 2, so, and we actually, for our loop, we actually start at 2. So we don't need 0 or 1, aren't, we're not kind of taking them as prime numbers. We're starting at 2. We know 2 is a prime number, but we're going to go. From there, so we so we're going to go for that, and we're actually going to do an inner loop. So we're going to go to the i is going to be our first kind of kind of the pattern is. So we see here where there's lots of twos, 
uh, appearing there. So first number is 2, cross out every second number in the list after 2 by counting up 2 increments of 2. 2 in increments of 2. And then 3s, 5s. So this is going to be like our number we're going to then go through and count up. So we're going to go 4. Uh, equals, and this will be our next loop. So okay, and we're going to. So we've got I. So we're going to go through each one. But we're going to, instead of incrementing by 1, we're going to increment by what this number is. So we're going to go plus i. And this is, so we're going to keep going to, well, we're not that number. But we can actually, but we want it to be equal to it. So we actually want it to go up to our 30. In this case, we yeah that we actually want to go up to a thirty. So, and so this is number is actually going to be, and we want to start at plus i. We want to start at i. And each time we want to plus the 2 on each one. Or we actually want to start at 2 times i. Or i times i. So 2 times 2 is 4. So the next, so when we're on 3, we want to start at 3. But we don't want to cross 3 out, so we want to move to the next one first. So it's 3 times 2. And then if we're on a 5, 5 times the next one is 10. So we actually want to times 2. So we start at 2. And each time we're plusing the whatever the increment value is. And we're going to go up to there. So let's just print, let's just see what this actually does. We can get so print putting print f in is a good way of seeing what's going on. So percent d percent d. This is saying hey, so it's got to have two arguments now, both of int type. So plus i and j, and so let's just see what it actually does. So compile and. So we're unusing the, so we're not actually assigning them to anything, so they're just being wasted. So I, we can use that plus equal. So we actually, what was going on there was we could have gone j e equals and assign it. So these were just kind of, it was doing this, but it wasn't, nothing was getting set. It was just kind of doing it and getting lost again. So plus equals actually does something to this variable. And we'll compile it again, and let's run it. So, so it goes up to 15, 30. So what's happening here? So it goes two. So we start so always. So it starts in this one, and it kind of goes into this inner loop, works that, and when that finishes, goes back up to the top, does that one, and then churns these ones out again. So. Two, two, two. So we've got that now list of twos because it starts at two, but then it kind of goes through this one. So it goes four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty, up to thirty. And it comes out of this loop, goes back up, increments by one. So it goes I was at two, goes to three. So now there's a list of those threes down the side. And then it starts at six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty. And it Spits that out and it does 4, so 4, 8, 12, and spits that out and it goes to 5 and keeps going till 
it gets to, there it is, 9, and it does 10. Fourteen, fifteen, and does that look right? Should it get be getting up to thirty? Is the question. So let's just run that out. Let's just see what I is on its own. Oh. Trying to use a build script. So that actually gets up to 30. So what was. Oh. So I think that's. So I wonder why. Oh, I think it was just um, not actually printing out anything because it goes because i times 2 automatically ends this loop. Because it suddenly, so it's over 15, as soon as the times by 2 goes to 30. And so it can't, it's no longer in this, can't go in this loop. So 15, so it does 15, but then as soon as it gets to 16. It's no longer valid, so it won't go actually. It won't actually hit this print statement. Okay. So we'll just. So we've got our numbers we actually want to do, but we're not actually. We don't have any concept of marking them out. So when we want to miss them. So we might. Um, we'll make an array. We could create a data structure that kind of has a flag that says, "Hey, is this crossed out?" But we're just going to. Start, start to see what this is like. So we're going to list all the numbers that we've crossed out. We're going to add them to this array. And so we want it the size of our number because we want to be able to put possibly all the numbers in there. Even though this, I don't think it's the case. Or um, maybe the, yeah, I don't think it can ever be the case with prime numbers, but we'll just, a good way of knowing how many we actually need. So this is um, crossed or invalid. numbers and so this just looks like a variable like that so that would just be like that but then to actually make it array so you have multiple variables in the one we pass this we give this kind of array um, these two brackets meaning hey it's an array so if we actually compile that it will say hey it's an array but you pass just one number me must initialize a list of wide string so it wants a initializer list, so we can pass it. So this is to say initialize a list, and we could go like this, and that would be fine. Is it's now an array of three, and if we don't pass a number, it just goes to whatever size you've passed in the list. If we pass two here, it would say, hey, it doesn't fit. It's an array. So, but we actually don't want it um, like that. We actually just want an empty to start with, and if I pass our number, so we, that's the size we want it, I actually say variable size object may not be initialized. It's because this is at compile time, this isn't actually, we don't know what this um, is. It kind of doesn't run the program. It could it has to be actual literal, or we could use define to like set it to like a kind of static kind of global, or we could do um, this and uh, global. We can see if this works. This ii. And so yeah, it has to actually be a real number kind of hard coded in there to make it work. So if we don't, that's just if we want to do it on the stack, but the other way to you do this, it's a variable number, we can allocate memory from the computer. So we're saying, hey, this is actually, we want it memory from the heap. So we can either use malloc or alloc, or malloc and it will alloc. It's kind of a different um, 
ways of allocating memory, saying, hey, we want a block of memory. And Calloc just basically clears it to zero for us. And, but we can use malloc to, and we can clear it ourselves. So we want size of, and this is, it takes how many bytes we actually want to get. So we can, we want a size of int, so whatever, how big int is, times by our number. So that's going to give us enough memory to bet all our numbers in. And then we're going to pass this, and this gives back a void pointer. So pointer to memory saying, hey, there's memory here. We don't know what type it is. So we're going to cast it as an int pointer saying, hey, I know what these are, they're ints. Let's just see what happens now. Um, so when we actually do this, this is no longer an array like that. It's an array like that, because an array is just a pointer, pointer to memory. So if we do that. It allows that own function and but to actually get malloc we need to pass it in another um, include so it's actually another function from the kind of csend library that we are using so we actually have to say hey where to find this what library it is and I think we can call malloc.h it, we can pass this one but this has a lot of everything else we could we will eventually do that but we'll just see what happens now uh, it doesn't know what malloc is so if I just go so we should get so that worked it knows where malloc is and it knows what it's doing so but the reason but if we're not in debug build malloc doesn't actually clear the memory so we can do mem set which is another um, function coming from the c stamp std lib so you know, it's mem set we're setting this memory address with this value and the size is we're going to store this in a variable of our own of that and we can pass that here so we're saying clear this memory to zero with this size so this is how much memory we want to clear so we'll compile that and Memset is not actually in stdlib, it's in string.h, so we'll include that as well. And we compile, and we got away with that. And calloc is kind of, has this in it, so if we go, and we just have to pass this one, meaning what size unit, and we're saying the bytes is each unit, so one byte, because um, that's the kind of just the standard saying that there's one byte to every one unit of memory space. Kind of if this was we'd use you normally don't use it's not common to use like different kind of sizes. There's just um, standard way of doing it. So that should clear it as well. So we can either choose either one. We'll just maybe we'll just keep with malloc. And so let's just we'll run it now. Okay, and so it's printing out the numbers. Okay, so we've got array. So now we're actually going to put stuff in this array. So um, comment that out. So so the J number is, if we look back at Wikipedia, is the number we actually want to cross out. So when we were printing them out, it's these numbers we're actually crossing out. So it starts with two, we cross all those out, then we move on to six, and if they haven't been crossed out, we cross them out. So we're going to put all our crossed out numbers in here, so invalid numbers. We're going to address this array, and we're putting it in position J, and we're saying, so we actually know what the value is because we've got J kind of um, indexing it, so kind of there's 30 and they're all zeros, so we actually know what number they are because they've 
figures, the index is the number. So we don't actually need to store the number again. We just want to say, is it true or false? Uh, we want to do more of that thing. So we'll change this to bool. So we're saying, hey, this is a true or false um, value in here. And we're going to also change this to equal. Saying, hey, we want the size of bools because we're storing bools in there. Booleans and then we get our array. So and we're going to say invalid true. So and the malloc should clear it to zero, which is false. So we'll just compile it. And doesn't know what in sten C doesn't know what bool is. So we can either include um, the bool um, library or we can just go define bool uh type def, sorry. So type def is saying there's a treat this as a type, but it's more of just like an alias or a define kind of wherever you, whenever you see this replace it for this. So and it's the, the other way to define. So instead of saying this is what it will look like and this is what it, it this is what it will look like. This is what you replace it with, it's this is what it you replace it with, this is what it looks like. So we'll compile that and type def needs a semicolon afterwards. So let's just see what happens. And we haven't got true or false. So let's just define true to be one and false to zero. So we've got our Boolean um, type we've set up. So and, and you can see it's just an int value, so we could just be storing ints here. And it's just kind of just instead of having all the numbers that an int can be, we're setting it to either 0 or 1. So we can actually go, so that's setting it to 1, and we're clearing it to 0 in our mem set. Okay. And then, so when we do that, we actually don't know what the numbers, what we got at the end. So that's just. We'll go over this array to see what happens at the end. So we'll go over our number. And our number, we actually, so we're not storing zero. So when we actually say, say if it's at two, and we put it in our array, it'll actually go at, it'll be, two will actually be the third, place in the array and since we actually want it to be greater than or equal to our number so if it's 30 we actually want to get rid of when we say 2 we will we'll still have the 0 index so it will still be 0 at 0 but we'll actually pass um, array size a number plus 1 Saying it can be, it has zero and thirty in our array, or we have the, and so we can still index it with the actual number. So you get, so when we put in two, we get place in two, and but it can actually it will be have thirty. It won't just go up to twenty nine. So we can go equal to, so we can be equal to our number, and we'll get invalid numbers. And instead of setting it, we want to see what it is. So we'll print f. And we could just um, print it as we go, just to save this other loop. But we'll just do this for now. So we'll go temp c. Because it's actually, we don't have a Boolean type. We've just got an integer. So invalid numbers, and we're looking up the i index. What? So we'll just get zero, one, and we'll pass what the actual index is. So percent c index. So this is this is actually us just writing index, and the i and the second will be that. So we'll compile that. We'll run that. And we'll put a new line so you can see it clearly. 
file one. So in X zero one two modifying modifying prime modifying uh prime not a prime prime not a prime not a prime not a prime 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 we should be comparing it to this list. Maybe we'll make it format it like that list so it's a bit easier to see. So we'll just go we won't have the new line and we'll go if it's actually a prime is so we're saying so that's is not not prime if it's like that. So we can do the opposite and just say it's prime. So we'll just print if it is is prime. Maybe if it's not prime, we'll print the index so that the number is. And maybe we'll just won't have any of the other stuff. We'll just have i. Let's see what happens now. And we'll do some spaces again. Compile it, it didn't compile it, and then we'll run it. Oops. Wait. And we'll put a new line at the end. So let's compare it. So at the end, it was. Oh, so they've just got the. Oh, wait, actually, yeah, maybe we'll just have the prime there, so it looks like that. So we went if it is prime. Try again. So, so we don't need those ones. So two, three, five, seven. 11, 13, 17, 19, 17, 29. So it looks like it's working, but we haven't done the optimization that they have. They have where they kind of um, early out when the number doesn't actually hit any. So we will put that in. So we'll just see what the value is before we actually set it. That would be four. And so we actually set it, but if fail before, so if it's already set to true, we actually, it's not set to true. We actually, this is a new one, so we want to um, kind of say, hey, we actually did something. This is not wasted, so, and we'll just store the count here. So this gets refreshed after at the start of each kind of number we get before we go through the list kind of checking them. We say, hey, we haven't hit any yet. And each time we change something, we um, up our count. And then if our count is equal to zero, so we didn't modify any, we can check. So you don't need to do anything else. There's all the primes are done. So this is just their optimization of kind of when these numbers are already crossed out, 14, 21, 28. And so we can finish. I think I'm not sure if this is correct. I'm not sure about the mouse behind this, but if it doesn't seem to work, we'll just get rid of this. So let's compile that. Line and let's just bump up our what we're looking for. So let's go and 2000 compiled. We're gonna get lots of numbers. Mm. 
11, 6, 13, 6, 11, 6, 7. So we should see no consecutive numbers if it if this early out worked. Because if it didn't, the even numbers would wouldn't have been set. And that looks pretty good. And we'll start here when we actually list them out, we will start at two, so we don't get those first numbers. So we start at two, so that's pretty good. And so we don't need this. So I think this is actually works. And break this means break the loop parent in, so step out of the loop. And this is if we did break here, so we'd step out of this loop. But would still be in this loop. So we want to break out of when we've finished this loop. So if the count, if we didn't actually modify anything, we're finished. We can kind of see what kind of optimization that is. We can see what when we broke where we're up to. So we'll bring that I. So we've got 2000, so that's just C, and we won't bring out this stuff. That we finished at four, so that was pretty good. So we only went to four, and then we've already found all the prime. And let's just see if it actually is that. So we'll print out the count. So I think let's see how many we actually got. So if it is prime C plus plus, that's just a coincidence. So C plus plus, and print F, and we'll print out C. So we'll do it once with this and once without and see if we got the same number. So let's compile. So 688 and then we'll get rid of this line. So we won't get a 4. 303. 668. 303. So I think that's not, so this must not be working, this isn't, must not be how it works. Because if that did work, we would have got the same amount. So we're not erring out and we get less prime numbers, so we do a more thorough job. So that's, that optimization must not actually be the case. I think if it maybe if it goes up to maybe that number, I'm not sure. We'll have to look more into it. But yeah, so we're definitely getting less prime numbers when we don't do this. So we we just won't do that. Okay, and we will get rid of optimization. Uh, and so yeah, we're definitely getting less. So I must not. Uh, I must have misunderstood the Wikipedia page. The number's not crossed out at this point. Three eight eight. So we'll get rid of this optimization. Maybe we'll come back to it later. So we'll just comment it out and we'll just say mm, optimization that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, put our break point in there so we know what it actually was. And so that's looking good, and we'll get rid of our variable that we were testing, and we'll print that out. And the last step, we'll actually get our number we pass into it. So we could actually use this argc to get it. So if we did args, argc, oh, one, so not zero, but one, and we assume if 
we're assuming we actually so if we didn't actually pass something we would crash so assume this is greater than zero so we've actually got actually passed something and we'll kind of see how this works and so we'll compile and try and store it this is a char star type so we're actually getting a char star out but we're trying to store an int so we're actually going to convert this and we'll use another function from the CSAM library which is turn a string to an integer so compile and it must be in the this one I think or could be interesting. I'm not sure which one that was in and change implementations so it crashed for some reason because we had this so I think we compiled so we'll just try and see if it crashes so it crashes again so we will so I feel like that should just kind of not my program so if our count is equal to one let me see if we crash no it still crashed I wonder what's let's just see if we're getting in here Ah, so it's just ignoring me, what the bugsy. Ah, oh, argsy is always one. It's greater than greater greater than one. So that's what we want. So we don't even run our program if it's in double so we don't pass anything. And we actually pass something. 34 or 4 what runs the pines and we took it the hey and we, we can compile so we can actually start passing things now so let's just pass for 56 and they're all the pines and the other thing is um We'll actually try to see if it actually gets a prime. I passed one. So if it's if the last number is a prime, does it give that back, back to us? Yeah, so that's good. And so the next step, we can actually go one further, and we can actually keep running our program, and they can ask to do things. So we're going to stick this. This is kind of our first game loop. So we're going to say bool. Uh, is our game running? Equals true. And so we're going to change this to while running. And this is basically an infinite loop. So this, as soon as it, while this is true, this is just going to keep running, and our program's never going to end. So if we did that now, this is going to print out lots of stuff. So it's just going to just keep doing what we're doing, and we'll make sure we pass a number. So it just keeps doing it, keeps doing it. So I think Control Z cancels it and we'll just clear so while running but we're going to wait on input so instead of this we're going to use a function called I think it's called f gets and basically gets input from the um, from the user Reads a line from a specific trim, stores it in a string pointed to by stir, starts mealing characters red, and the value of each other comes first. And what does it return? Same, so it returns the same str value. So it returns whatever we pass into it. So we'll do that. And we're getting it from a thing called stdin. So this is kind of the um, common thing for. Um, to say that we're getting it from the command prompt or the terminal instead of like a file as in they had a file file string so actually use the input from the terminal um, size of our buffer so we'll just get so actually where we actually want to read it into we we'll actually have to create that so this is our 
buffer and we're saying it's size of 256 so if it goes over that we miss that input so we'll say 256 so we'll kind of um, use the same variable for that and our char string is called buffer and since it this is said this is the same as buffer so we don't have to do that and so we'll just kind of we'll make it define buffer size and we'll do capitals just to say it's a constant and we're saying it's two size 256 and so that and that you could also do an array count if we had an array count function that could just get the array the count of the array so and we'll also print f before we do this And we've got a new line, save that, let's see what happens. Compile our A2O function. We actually want to pass it the buffer now, whatever's in this buffer, turn into an integer. So compile. And so we're no longer, we can pass that, but the 19, but it doesn't actually do anything, so we'll just get rid of it. So now it's saying, what primes do you want? So let's see what that corresponds to. So we've got printing f, print f, what prime numbers do you want? So it prints that out, does a new line, and then now it's waiting for our input. So it's before we were just churning through our program, so while running, and it was just kept doing it, but this time it's actually waiting for our input. So if I say um, 23, which is just the list of prime numbers, and then the last list again, wait for our input. So it kind of does that, hits there, hey, we're still running, Go back to the top, run through this again. What primes do you want? Brings that out and then waits again out. So it kind of stalls for input. So that's kind of getting our input. So it looks like this might also do a new line for us. So we'll get rid of this. Control Z to stop it. Let's just compile again and see if we get that same. So it does a new line for us, so that looks good. So we don't need to put our new line in. And but we also want to say if I say write quit or to say Q, we might want to finish our program. So we don't want to put a small I don't want to control Z from a command line every time. So if git, um, we're just gonna see if buffer place zero is equal to the character Q running equals false. Else, actually do all the program work. And we'll just tab all this across. And let's see what happens now. We'll compile. And again, so how many primes do we want? 34. So we then, if I just pass Q, it quits. So uh, it should just do that. If I right quit, since the Q is still the first character in the buffer, it still quits for us. I think that's pretty good. So we've got our first program, we can actually do stuff and it does stuff for us. We can see if we can run it from the binder window. So, so that's really, that's is all our whole program, just our source file and our game. And that and so it runs it in the terminal 45 quits and done so that's pretty good i think we've made a good start to our programming in c and we've made our first program that actually does stuff getting prime numbers creating prime number sequences we're not sure actually what we never did our that optimization but we can read more about how it actually does that but for now this will be the end of the video so thanks for watching games in c and the next video we'll do, try to do another kind of program similar to this maybe the Euler's number sequences or something similar and see how that goes so thanks for watching and see you in the next video